Hi, I'm Dr. Wilson. I'm a PhD molecular biologist and welcome to another COVID-19 debunking video. This week I'll be making a short video addressing a particular claim that a lot of COVID anti-vaxxers seem to be making without actually understanding the data. COVID anti-vaxxers want to scare people into believing that COVID vaccines are not safe, even though they very much are. But in order to convince people of this, they have to first misrepresent data. And the data that they're misrepresenting in this claim is the VAERS data. VAERS stands for Vaccine Adverse Event Reporting System. This is a passive reporting system that is used by researchers to track adverse events that follow vaccination. Notice how I said follow vaccination, not caused by vaccination. In fact, a better name for this system might be the suspected Vaccine Adverse Events Reporting System. But in any case, this is a system that anybody can report adverse events to. And while doctors are required to report serious adverse events following vaccination to this system, anybody can report anything to it, even if the event clearly had nothing to do with the vaccine or didn't happen at all. For example, events reported to and documented by the VAERS database have in the past included things like getting a bald spot, getting a nosebleed, being turned homosexual, and even being turned into the Incredible Hulk. These are all things that anti-vaxxers like Peter McCullough, Steve Kirsch, and Ryan Cole won't tell you about VAERS when they try to claim that VAERS data conclusively shows that COVID vaccines have killed thousands of people, which is just totally not true. So if such ridiculous reports can be documented in VAERS and widely misinterpreted by the general public, then why does VAERS even exist? Well, there's a very good reason for it, and it's exactly the thing that anti-vaxxers don't want to admit exists. Safety monitoring. The important thing to recognize here, though, is that VAERS is only the first step of this safety monitoring. It is only intended to generate hypotheses for researchers that they can further investigate. It is not meant to act as a confirmation of any one event happening or even being caused by a vaccine. So when people are telling you that the VAERS data show thousands of vaccine deaths, they are blatantly lying to you. The biggest issue with making interpretations based on VAERS data alone is that there is no control group. So the first thing you have to do is compare the events you're observing in the VAERS database to a control group. Researchers can simply do this just by looking at the frequency of any one event reported and verified in the VAERS system and then comparing that to a control group. So for example, if I wanted to know whether or not COVID vaccines cause Bell's palsy, I would look at the number of events reported and confirmed in the VAERS database and then compare that to the number of events that we expect in a normal population. Because after all, if you're giving hundreds of millions of doses of vaccine to a population all at once, they're going to have normal health events happening at a normal frequency. You have to be able to parse out these two things. And with the example of Bell's palsy, when researchers looked at how many cases were actually happening after vaccination compared to the general population, they found that these cases were actually normal, that there was no increased risk of Bell's palsy following vaccination. This is a real world example, and the link to that study is in the description below, along with a ton of other helpful links. So my message here is be critical. Don't just accept that someone is telling you the truth when they tell you that thousands of people have been killed by COVID vaccines, because it's not true when you actually do the work and look at the data. Scientists are really good at picking out rare side effects from the VAERS database and doing the follow-up work to confirm that they're real side effects. This actually happened with the J&J &J and AstraZeneca vaccines, which use an adenoviral vector instead of mRNA technology. If you remember several months ago, there were rare cases of a certain kind of blood clot that were being associated with Johnson & Johnson and AstraZeneca vaccines. Obviously, the benefits of getting a J&J &J shot far outweigh the risks, but that's not the point here. The point is that scientists were able to use VAERS combined with Vaccine Safety Data Link in order to identify really, really rare events. And those rare events alone were enough to temporarily suspend the J&J &J shot in America. That should be reassuring to you, and this has happened before. For example, the rotavirus vaccine, which is against a virus that kills 500,000 children every single year worldwide, was taken off the market because of 10 really, really rare cases of a rare intestinal obstruction. So if you acknowledge the fact that these incredibly rare events in the past can be captured by vaccine data scientists, reported, and have consequences for the vaccine manufacturers, then there is no way you are going to believe someone who is boldface lying, telling you that 
there are thousands and thousands of deaths from COVID vaccinations that are just going ignored. Besides, we have several other methods we can use to assess the safety of vaccines, and those methods have been done for COVID vaccines because COVID vaccines are arguably one of the most studied set of vaccines in history. For example, here is a direct study of vaccine safety on a nationwide scale in Israel. This study's vaccine and control groups consisted of almost 900,000 patients each. And this study overall found that, again, COVID vaccines are very safe. And in every case, they are much safer than getting a COVID infection. Again, I'll link all of this stuff in the description below, so that if someone is telling you that there are thousands of deaths being caused by COVID vaccines, you can tell them that they're wrong and send them that list of studies. It's not okay that people are spreading this kind of misinformation and scaremongering about vaccines when a global pandemic still continues to ravage unvaccinated populations. It's not okay that people are profiting and building their brands off of these lies. And it's not okay that these lies are directly leading to more unnecessary deaths. So stay informed, fight misinformation whenever you can, and most importantly, get vaccinated. That's how we end this pandemic. That's going to do it for this week's short video. I do hope you've enjoyed it. Again, all of the links are in the description below. Please check them out. Read them for yourselves. As always, thank you for watching, and don't forget to subscribe so you can catch me next week where I'll be debunking some more funky stuff. See you then.